Hey everyone, I hope you're doing great today. I am so happy to say, to finally say, I'm sharing our prep kitchen with you today. The final reveal. It has been a very, very long time. Uh, a lot of you guys who've been watching know that I started this project months ago and then had my surgery and then went through recovery, couldn't really do anything, and then life gets away from you and it's been what? four months now. Uh, well, we started it, I think, five months ago. Oh my gosh. But we are finally finished. I'm super happy with the way it turned out. I cannot wait to share it with you. This is not a super long video, um, so I'm going to get right into it. I knew I wanted the shelving in here to be a little bit more of like an art piece, something just a little bit more visually interesting, I guess, than just throwing some shelves on the wall. Um, I also didn't want to put a ton of holes in the wall, which... I mean, at the end of the day, I kind of did anyway. But any, anyway, uh, I found these on Etsy. I thought it was so cool to have these, this like suspended shelving system that just hangs from the ceiling. Um, so I bought the brackets from Etsy and then we made our own shelves. I just got some, I think I got poplar. Yeah, poplar from Home Depot, cut it to size. I'm gonna sand it and stain it black and show you guys the process. I was originally gonna leave the wood on the shelving natural, but I didn't want the wood from the buffet below it to fight with the tone of the wood from the shelves. And I also wanted to be able to stand in this room or stand in the kitchen, look through this room to our dining room and the rest of the house and really have it be cohesive. So having that black pop against the white wall really ties in with the black chairs in the dining room and then the black on the fireplace. It just, it's so cohesive now and that's what I was going for. So every time I had an option to change something in this space, I stood back from from every area in the room and looked through to the rest of the house and then made my decision from there. So where this wood was gorgeous the way it was, it just wasn't quite right for what I was going for. And I'm really happy that I used a black stain because you can still see the grain of the wood and it still looks really natural and cool, but just has more of a pop off the wall now. Come sit here with me by the fire and let it go for a little while So be here as the night starts falling Let my fingers walk over your head We got nothing to be scared of I'd rather be with you than by myself Not always in your head I found these beautiful brass pole handles on Etsy. I didn't necessarily need any handles because uh, the doors have like a push and pop close hardware on them, but I wanted to add a little bit of jewelry. I wanted to add a little bit of brass so it tied in with the brass in the kitchen. And even though they like I don't need them, they look really pretty and really kind of pulled the cabinetry together.
And now I'm just drilling some pilot holes and then popping a few screws in the bottom of the shelves. That way everything stays nice and secure and we don't have any wobbling. Now John and I are getting ready to make a concrete countertop surface for the island. I wasn't wild about the veneered wood that Ikea had on the island that we chose, so we just wanted to have some fun and build a concrete countertop. It's something we've always wanted to do and we thought this was the perfect place to do it. I'm not gonna walk you through step by step, but I will put a link to the um, like the tutorial that we found online that we used. And if you guys wanna try it out, then you can use the exact one that we did. This was actually quite an easy and enjoyable process. You just have to make the form for whatever size and dimension you're looking for. This was super easy for us because we just needed a rectangle, so that was nothing. Um, it'd be really neat in a kitchen, like in our kitchen, we're like, man, this would have been so cool. I wish we would have done this, but working with all the angles and the cutouts and stuff would have definitely been more time consuming. It would have been worth it, but it would have been much more time consuming. But if it is something that you guys wanna do, it's fully worth it. They look gorgeous. They're really inexpensive. You just have to put some elbow grease into it and have uh, some pretty strong hands to lift it when you're finished. At this point, I'm going in with a rubber mallet and an orbital sander. What this does is it causes a lot of vibration to go through the concrete and get all of the bubbles that are in there settling and bring them up to the surface so they pop. You wanna make sure you get all of the bubbles out so that your concrete is sound and sturdy and sets well um, because that will prevent cracking and things down the road.
And once you get about halfway to the thickness you desire, you put in remesh. So this is just gonna add durability and strengthen the concrete slab. Uh, you want about two inches from each edge of your uh, countertop. So that's what we did. We cut it down and then filled another inch or so. I believe ours is about two inches thick. With the concrete we used, it recommended you let your concrete cure for an entire week. So that was sitting in the garage for a week. And in between, I was just doing little projects here and there. At this point, I'm putting together the chairs that I found for the island. I needed two chairs. I wanted them black because the only other thing or element in the prep kitchen that was black was the shelving. So I wanted to have something to mimic that closer to the floor. So I found these on Amazon. They came in a two pack very inexpensive and they were exactly what I was looking for. So I'm so glad um, finding chairs like countertop chairs, bar stool chairs can be really expensive if you're looking for something super specific. So I happened to stumble upon these and I got two for, I think they were under $250 for the pair and I thought that was a steal. All right, so we were really excited to take apart the form and see what our end product looked like. Um, so basically you're just gonna take it apart and then the top of your countertop is going to be what was on the bottom of the form. So you'll see us flip it over. What's cool about concrete is there are endless options. You can customize this any way you want. I think you can add dyes to it, you can stain it, you can polish it, you can do a high gloss sealer, you can do a matte sealer. There are so many things you can do with it. I love the variations and you really don't know how it's gonna turn out once you turn it over, but I think it looks really cool with all of the variation in it. Um, 
I did order a sealant that hasn't arrived yet. I think it's arriving today when I'm doing these voiceovers and posting the video. So um, maybe I'll include it into something else. But we really wanted ours to just look extremely natural. I didn't want a high polish or anything like that. So we just softened up the rough edges and then um, we're going to be sealing it with a food grade sealant. And now for the fun part, I'm going to tie everything together, add some decor and some frames. My goal was to try to hide as many of these hideous seams as I could. If you've been watching me for a while, I have, an ins I have installed a ton of wallpaper and I don't have a single room in my house with wallpaper where I'm not happy with it. But this room, this wallpaper was another beast for me. Um, you can see all kinds of imperfections. In some light, you see all the imperfections and then toward the evening when the light is soft, you can't see a single seam in this wallpaper. So, am I super happy with the wallpaper or super proud of it? Not at all, not in the slightest. So I tried to find as many things as I could to cover the majority of the seams and not really bring your eye to them. But if I ever get some time, especially this one here, I can't stand it. I threw a snake plant in front of this one. <laughs> but um, if I ever get some time, I'm going to really try to go through and refine these seams with like an X-Acto knife and extra glue and really try to fix them. Um, I did what I did with all of the other wallpaper in my house, but for some reason, maybe it's all the natural light we get in here. It's just painfully obvious. So um, if you see it, I, I, I see it too. So if you're wondering, so I chose these sconces that I found on Amazon that I love. They're so beautiful, but I didn't want anything hardwired through here because I didn't want to open up the wall. So I found these sconces that you just hang up on the wall and they come with a battery operated light bulb. It's amazing. You can dim them and you can change them from cool to warm. Uh, this also kind of covered up a couple of the imperfection I have over on the right side or the left side by the kitchen door. Uh, so they look pretty. They add some really neat like ambiance, but they also covered up some things I didn't like. I also knew I wanted a lot of frames in this space uh, because we spend a lot of time in here as a family prepping dinner and baking and things like that. I wanted to look on the walls and I just wanted it to feel cheery and homey and make me smile and make my kids proud. If you guys know me, you know I love to display their artwork and frames around the house. So all of these frames will eventually be filled with artwork that my kids have made and I love changing them out with the seasons and the holidays. and. It's also really hard for me to just like pick a piece of art and be like, yeah, that's going to look great. I have a really hard time doing that, but there's something about putting your kids artwork in beautiful frames. You just can't go wrong with it. So because this room is primarily used for prepping dinner and 
a lot of the baking that we do eventually my shelves are going to be full of spices and like dry ingredients so to start I just threw up some flour and some sugar I have like a mortar and pestle uh, for salt and things like that but I'm gonna have like little jars of like cinnamon and different spices and things like that um, I get a lot of questions why a prep kitchen what does that mean well our kitchen is very small and doesn't offer a lot of space for our entire family to be in their cooking together which we really enjoy doing we love teaching our children how to cook and they enjoy the process as well so having this space outside of our tiny kitchen is just a space for us to gather for us to cook together or, or prep our meals I should say we do a lot of baking and so this space has been perfect for that um, and then holidays when we have family over and everybody wants to be cooking or prepping something different it's just another space for us and it's a temporary space for the next couple years until John and I blow out our garage and build a big kitchen um, it's just not possible with the space we have now we get a lot of suggestions like oh you should just blow this out and do that but what you guys don't see on the other side of the wall by the kitchen is our garage so it's just not possible to do anything else with this room for now this just makes the most sense and it's beautiful I love it and it actually is very functional for us which is obviously that was the goal Maybe you won't see me get in and sometimes I pretend I'm just above it all But I want you lying next to me Yeah, I want your body, body, body too Yeah, body too And baby, please don't think I'll run away from you It's just sometimes I get scared to dive into it I want you lying next to me yeah, I want your body, body, your body too Yeah, body too Will you be my ride or die? Around all these people will try to be someone better than you so now we're just taking a metal file and filing away at some of the rough edges but most of this is just going to be hidden because it doesn't overlap too far on the island and like i said i wanted it to look pretty rough and pretty natural a little bit more industrial so we didn't go to town polishing or sanding or anything it actually ended up being really smooth and we didn't have to do a ton of work to it Body too, yeah, body too. And baby, please don't think I'll run away from you. It's just so. So, John just added a few shims underneath the concrete between the base of the or the top of the island, whatever you want to call it, just to make sure it wasn't wobbly or anything like that. And then I'll caulk around the edges. And when the sealant comes, I will seal it. So, when that time comes I will show you guys it's just not in this video because I didn't have everything I needed and since that was literally all that was left I just wanted to get this out and show you guys for the sake of showing you it finished otherwise we would have been waiting another week or so so uh, I will finish it but it's basically gonna look exactly as it looks now here so now it's time to add the chairs pull in a rug and just kind of tie it all together and show you guys the finished product I'm also gonna show you what the space looked like before we bought the house after we did our first um, breakfast room and what it looks like today thank you so so much for watching as always i hope it brought you some motivation or some inspiration to transform a space in your house you'd be surprised what you're capable of i did this almost entirely by myself except for like the heavy lifting and things i designed it i chose everything start to finish and i could not be more proud of it i love it let me know what you guys think in the comments and i will see you in next week's video